Hello guys, welcome back to Watch This. I hope you're all doing well. So this is another piece in my collection here and this is an incredible watch, guys. This is the Mudmaster GWG 1000-1A. Now, this, this particular watch comes in uh, another two colors. There is a limited edition camo strap and there is also the standard green strap one as well. So you can get this in the black, which is what I've got here, and you can get this in a camo, and there are other limited edition uh, G-Shock Mudmasters as well. But this particular piece, guys, is an incredible watch. Um, this is seriously one watch that I haven't taken off for nearly, I don't know, three or four months now. Uh, this thing lives on my wrist. Uh, sleep with it day and night, and it's an incredible watch, guys. Um, so let me run through a couple of features. So obviously you can see here it is a, um, a, a, a sapphire crystal here. So this particular watch will not scratch very easily. This is very scratch resistant sapphire crystal here, guys. Um, and obviously around this sapphire crystal here, you've got all the, the uh, world time here. Um, every country there you can see and you can adjust that to each country, obviously, wherever you, you are based in the world. Um, you've got the, obviously the hour, uh, the second and the minute, sorry, uh, hands, and you've got these, uh, I think they're Arabic numbers here. These, the loom on this is fantastic guys. I mean, I, I, you know, rarely use the light, which is this button right there. I don't know if you can, there you go. You can see that there. I rarely use this, but the loom on this watch is fantastic guys. It's all really, really visible at night as well. Um, and also mine, this is a, uh, also, this is a digital and analog watch as well, which I love because sometimes, you know, I mean, you want that class and elegance of a, uh, an analog watch, but you also want the ability for a digital as well. And obviously G-Shock, um, uh, really, really great at doing these kind of uh, designs and watches, half analog and half digital. The other brand is obviously Breitling, and uh, they're, you know, nearly five or six times the price of one of these. So, you know, you'd be paying close to three or $4,000 for a, d a digital and analog Breitling, uh, like a B50 or something like that. But um, anyway, back to this. So this watch is uh, 200 meters water resistant, guys. Um, a really tough case here, which is all resin. This is your triple sensor here. Um, you obviously have the compass there. So if I do press the compass there, and it's a pretty cool feature there where it always points north, no matter where you turn the watch. So check that out, it's always pointing north. That's great. And to exit that feature, you just press the bottom left. There you go. And obviously uh, the altimeter here. So this will give you an, an, an alt, um, a reading of how high you are, 31 meters, and it does adjust here with this hand when you initially press it to make that screen visible so you can see your height there. So I'll press that again. Let's see if it moves. There you go. So you can see I'm about 32 meters above sea level, which is awesome. Let's get back here. Um, other than that, guys, it's pretty standard uh, for this particular watch. I mean, you've got the, the sensors here, you've got the, the compass, you've got the altimeter, you've got a barometer here as well. So if I press this, it'll go through the options, say Barrow. So you can see here the Omega Pascals, uh, 1010, which is pretty good weather. And if it drops lower, it's going to be bad weather. So that's pretty much how you read the barometer. Press that again. You've got a temperature here, 30 degrees in my office now, which is really warm. <clears throat> that's pretty straightforward. Uh, we've got the recall feature. I'm not too privy on how this recall feature works, guys, but I'm still working on that. Um, obviously, you've got your stopwatch and you start and stop that here. Obviously, pressing the below button here, that started the stopwatch there. And you reset that now back to zero. What else have we got here? We've got a timer, so you can set that from any time you want. Obviously, when you're adjusting this, that um, minute hand will move out of your way. And you've got an alarm feature here. Now, every hour I've got this on to make a noise to notify me when the hour, every hour that the it goes by, which is a really cool feature, I think. Anyway, it just tells you what time of day it is. You've got the world time feature here, so you can adjust any time in the world. I've got that set to Sydney. Um, now, another thing as well, this particular watch does have a receiver in a multiband six. So there are there are towers around the world, um, which uh, this watch will pick up a signal from from radio frequencies, and it will self adjust every single time. But in Australia, unfortunately, we don't have that ability to have the G Shock uh, access to those G Shock towers, which is 
quite annoying, but um, nevertheless, you just got to watch and just it'll pretty. It's very accurate. This movie is incredibly accurate, but in terms of the auto timing adjust, unless you're overseas, out of Australia, it's really not going to work. Um, other than that, guys, I mean, there are other watches that have that feature, but not this one. Um, it can't pick up the radio signals in Australia, but uh, anywhere else in the world, you'd be good to go. It will automatically pick up the time wherever you are in the world. All right, so that's your world time feature. Um, this is RC, so this is recall. Um, this will tell you exactly when the watch picked up those radio, radio frequencies and what time it adjusted itself. I believe it's every hour. Um, you can set this to a power saving mode, so it does um, stop that automatic um, time setting. Um, it's obviously save battery, guys. Um, so you can set that to a low, but that is when, that gives you an indication of when that picked up that radio signal. So you press that again, and it brings you back to the main menu here, which I've got to set to the, obviously, the digital clock. Now, in the top left-hand corner here, if you press this button here, gives you the day, the date, and you press it again, it gives you the, a, a barometer, I don't know if you can see it there because the hand's in the way. Great time to do a film, hey. Um, so that gives you the barometer reading here. It stays on your screen as well as the date. And you press it again and it takes you back to the time. So pretty much that sums up this particular watch here. And obviously at the back of this case here, guys, you've got this solar panel. So um, I've left this uh, on charge under the sunlight on a windowsill. Uh, for a good part of uh, six to seven hours and it fully charged the battery. Um, and as mentioned, the loom was just glowing bright green, which is really cool. Um, and you press and hold this bottom left button here and you should see a little, uh, a medium or high there. So let's press it and have a look. There you go. So it's currently at high. I don't know if you can see that there. There you go, it says H. Uh, that means the battery is fully charged. If it says M, medium, uh, which pretty much is medium charge. And if it says L, it'll be uh, low. So what happened when I first got this particular watch, when I bought it, um, it was in the box for a while. So the second hand was like tick, 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 tick. It was jittery. And that's because the battery was low. And I, as soon as I exposed that under a light, that then retained, went back to normal the way it's going now. Um, other than that, guys, so you can unscrew this crown here, which is, a you know, for a G-Shock, it's pretty unusual. And I like this on a G-Shock when you think about it. The red indicates that it's not closed, so don't go swimming unless this is fully closed and you don't see that red. But if you pull this out, you can adjust the city that you're in, uh, which I won't do that now, and you press this bottom left button here, and you can adjust the DST, which is obviously the uh, daylight savings time, and the key sounds, so there you go, it's moving now, it's moving out of the way. You can adjust the sounds for the, uh, the watch. This is the auto light. Um, so the light will automatically come on when you move your wrist. And this is the actual light duration. So this is one second, you turn this, it becomes uh, two seconds, if it wants to do it. No, one, two, three, there we go, two. Don't know why it's not doing that. Anyway, so we'll leave it at one second, but I think you can do it for two seconds. I'm not sure why it's not doing it. Anyway, <laughs> it's all good. So that's your uh, light function there. And that's your 12 hour times. So you can set that 12 hours or 24 hours and the power saving mode as well. So you can adjust the power saving mode to obviously save that battery. So other than that, guys, that's pretty much it. So you can push that in and that's each one of these features as well, guys. Like for example, your bar barometer, your temperature, your stopwatch. If you pull this out, you're going to get different features as well. So uh, I won't go into that because it will just take literally an hour. So I'm screwing that back in. And you can see that now that, that is closed and that red line is gone. So that is now safe to go into water or mud. Um, case back, guys. So check that bad boy out there. It is stainless steel at the back, which is cool. Um, and you've got these awesome wrist little uh, straps, comfort uh, pieces in here, which really wrap around your wrist really nice. And it is really comfortable as well. The strap is resin. Um, obviously, it doesn't have the carbon fiber like the Rangeman. And I'll do a video on that as well. But uh, it is a sturdy strap as well when you've got your stainless steel buckle here. Um, I believe it's uh, 12, 30, over 30 millimetres up here and it does taper down to a smaller size of 20, I think it's 20, 21 millimetres or something like that. So it does taper down and you've got your vibe resist there. So this shock resistance so you can, you know, construction workers and whatnot can use this watch. 
and it's not going to get damaged as well. It will sustain a substantial knock as well. And these can be dropped from a, a three-story building and they'll still be ticking fine. Um, the other features, guys, let's have a look here. Um, that's pretty much sums up the GWG 1000-1A uh, Mudmaster, guys. This is a, an incredible watch from G-Shock, uh, and they haven't really updated anything from this apart from the, there's a new Mudmaster that's connected to uh, the Bluetooth app, which, you know, really, when you think about it, it's you know, whatever, it's not really any additional features. This is the creme de la creme of G-Shock watches, guys. Other than the Rangeman, which is, um, again, an uh, digital, sorry, I really wanted this size watch. By the way, this is 56 millimeters uh, in diameter, which is a big watch. And the weight, let's have a look here. It's just over 120 grams, it has to be around that weight. I'll clarify that in the comments if anyone asks. I'll have a look on the website. But uh, other than that, guys, let's do the token wrist shot here because that would be an awesome thing to see as well. I have a 7.5-inch um, a wrist, so watches, I need them to be as big as possible. So let's chuck that on there. I'll make that a little bit looser so you guys can see. So that sits in there nicely. And there it is, guys, on my 7.5-inch wrist. That is the G-Shock Mudmaster GWG. 1000-1A. Uh,